Hi everyone and welcome to episode 6 of the Books, Hooks and Yarn podcast. My name is Crystal and you can find me as Books, Hooks and Yarn on both Instagram and Ravelry. I um, haven't got much of my Ravelry but I am starting to do projects and all the details for my projects so that's something new and different for me to try but um, I'm starting to. It's not as comprehensive as some people's Ravelries but it is getting there. Right, where to start? I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas and Happy New Year and I hope you're all enjoying holidays if you got any or if you're back to work. I hope that's going well for you as well. I am in a different location today. This is my bedroom because everyone is home um, and normally that wouldn't be a problem because my husband's not like noisy, like he's fine. Um, and I could just pop a movie on for my girls and that would be okay. Like we'd get some background noise like last episode, but you know, whatever. But I have birthday stuff to talk about for my January baby, my bear, and I didn't want her to hear it. So I've locked myself away in the bedroom, but my camera is up on a basket on my bed. So if it wobbles a little bit when I move, that's why. Um, other biggest noticeable difference I guess is my hair I dyed my hair or well, actually technically my husband dyed my hair and boy did he do a thorough job um it's not looking it in this light right now because it's overcast and raining today seriously I don't know where our summer has gone but this is not it um but my hair is red and I love it I've always wanted to go red and finally bit the bullet on Christmas Eve actually and my husband did it for me and I think I will be this colour or a varying shade of this colour for a long time. I actually have finished objects to show you today so I guess I'll do that. <sighs> I got our Christmas socks done. I was up till one o'clock in the morning on Christmas Eve finishing my last sock. I wore it the next morning without it being washed or blocked or anything but I had Christmas socks on my feet on Christmas morning. We all did. And I really, I really wanted to get a photo of all of our socks together. But I guess that's what happens when you leave it till so late to get them finished. You don't get that beautiful, you know, family portrait with all your socks. And it was just so busy on actual Christmas that I didn't get a chance to do it then either. So I've just got mine hubby's socks here to show you because I think I've already shown my daughters. All right, these are my husband's. They are basically identical. I'm so jealous. I'll show you why in a second. But yes, these are his socks. 72 stitches on a 2.5 millimeter, nine inch circular needle. Um, I followed the how to knit socks on a nine inch circular tutorial by the crazy sock lady. It's on YouTube. It's the best tutorial. I absolutely love it. And it's actually what I follow for all of my socks now, except for my daughter's tube socks because it's just I don't know I love the heel we both love the heel I think it's just a short row heel I'm actually not sure but it's just the heel you do when you're on nine inch circulars and it's quite pointy but it fits both of our heels beautifully all right so that's his that's in the flot sock Mississippi I don't have the yarn tag label here with me but yes it's a flot sock Mississippi and he loves it because they look Christmassy without being too full on. And these are mine. Ta-da! Now, see, his were identical. I think the only difference between his is... I think I accidentally skipped five rows somewhere. I'm not sure where. So, right on the tips, this one goes the dark blue, light blue, grey, and then the, like, medium blues. Whereas this one just goes dark blue light blue and it finishes with the gray I actually sewed up with the gray instead of finishing in the with the medium blues but that's okay that's the only difference everything else is identical it's amazing I don't know what happened with mine maybe I actually started on like the tiniest amount of difference with the yarn because and then it's just spiraled out of control from there so the cuffs look fairly similar and it looks great going down and then somewhere around here we start getting differences 
and I did a 30 round leg on both socks so I'm not sure what's going on there but it just keeps getting worse and worse and then my heels one's blue one's not and then we get to the feet okay one of these has been aggressively blocked and the other one has not so that's why there's a size difference there my blue one has not been aggressively blocked actually that could be the one that hasn't been blocked at all <laughs> they've been both been washed but i think one of them hasn't been blocked hmm. might have to fix that at some point yeah i don't know what's going on so basically there's some finishes with the green tone this one does not They've both got the same length foot as well. I just don't understand. But it's okay. I mean, they're just my socks. Like, I know they're supposed to be Christmas socks, but I've been wearing them flat out. I'm actually going to put them on now because the weather is awful. They look super cute when they're on. Okay, so mine were also Flop Sock Mississippi. Sorry, we're going to wobble while I put these on. Um, Flop Sock Mississippi. A different colorway, obviously. Um, and I used 2.75 millimeter nine inch circulars instead of the 2.5 because I had tried my hubby sock on and it fit his foot's longer than mine so I did more rounds on his foot and it fit it was just a little bit too snug in the material around the ankle I like it just a tad bit looser not so it feels like it's going to fall off my foot but I don't know I just like I've got it on right now and it doesn't really feel like I'm wearing anything whereas I noticed this one's on my foot I'm a bit um, sensitive in the skin so I just wanted something that wasn't sitting too close to my skin I guess okay I've got my socks on now the only other finished object I have I don't actually have here because it was a present for my husband's Nana I call her my Nana as well because um, I've only got one living grandmother and she lives in Queensland so I don't get to see her that much and she's my grandma she's not a Nana she's my grandma um, so I made the please may no may I borrow this please shawl by Lorraine Waitman. Uh, it's free on Ravelry and it's an absolutely beautiful shawl. It's a lot of people have done it with gradients and it looks stunning in the gradient but I wanted to use this pink and green. Is it variegated? I don't know what they call it but yeah it's pink and green and it's got little bits of like a uh, really light pink or almost white in there and that is the Rose Bush by Minerva Fiber Arts. Sorry, it's all a bit blurry. Uh, it is 8-ply Crowdale. It's absolutely... Western Australia Crowdale, sorry. Um, and it's absolutely beautiful. It was so nice to knit with. I'm a bit of a silly person. And when I originally posted about this on Instagram, I accidentally said it was by Rosie Cheeks Handmade. And I do have yarn yeah, from Rosie Cheeks Handmade. But I think I was thinking about the Rosebush colorway. And I just kind of automatically typed at Rose... And she, Rosa Chicks Handmade is the first one that comes up for me under Rose. So I just kind of selected that. But no, it's Minerva Fiber Arts on Etsy. And her yarn is absolutely beautiful. I bought some of it for my mum as well for Christmas. And she actually made me um, unscathe it and everything for her on Christmas Day. So she could start crocheting with it straight away. It was so cute. Um, I do have like a bit of a photo of the pattern close up. That I got in my car on the way to taking it to Nana's. But that's it. I don't actually have the shawl in its entirety. The shawl ended up stunning. Um, and I loved it. And I loved knitting it. But it was actually a little bit too small. I didn't realise that I probably needed to make an extra 20 centimetres of length on it. To comfortably wrap around my Nana's neck. But at the same time it might have also been that I was too worried about putting it on her too tight so I just kind of loosely showed her when she puts it on herself it might fit perfectly but I wasn't like gonna yank the ends and make it really tight around her neck just to show her how to wear it I tied it on myself and it fit me beautifully and it sat perfectly it just sat kind of like a triangle it's not a tri it is a triangle shawl but it's one of those ones where it starts off small and it ends up with the long wide side <clears throat> excuse me we're on the weather has changed so dramatically in the last few days that it's kind of given everyone summer colds and it bites it's the worst okay i think that is it for my finished objects which means we must be on to whips 
I cannot believe I just did that. I am so sorry. <laughs> All right, first thing on whips, I finished Christmas socks and all I could think about was casting on another pair of socks. I didn't straight away because like I finished Christmas morning. So I thought, oh, no, give yourself a break and get over Christmas and everything and then cast on. So I cast these on on the 28th of December. We had a Christmas, another Christmas lunch at my in-laws. So I was like, oh, this is a perfect thing for me to just sit there and knit on. I'll get those cast on and then I can get started. So I'm making another pair of socks from the um, Crazy Sock Lady tutorial that I mentioned before. And these are just on. I don't know if I have a tag here. I don't think I do. It's the Bendigo Woolen Mills Undyed Sock Yarn. Um, and I dyed it myself. I think I showed... I think I showed this one last time. It was already skeined up, caked up because I was just so desperate to start using it. So these are just with blue food dye that I tried to dye down with some black and it didn't quite work. And I don't mind. And I'm completely in love with how it's knitting up. It's just so beautiful and it's so soft. And it smells great, which is concerning because I use vinegar to prep my yarns. And a lot of them have like a weird fish and chip shop smell. But this doesn't, and it's absolutely beautiful. Look at all those blues in there. And I love the bits of undyed yarn that it stayed white because it just, it reminds me of those um, beautiful summer days you get where it's all just blues and fluffy wisps of clouds. And yeah, that's what it reminds me of. Yeah. So I don't officially name my colorways, but I kind of call them something in my head when I'm thinking about them. And this is my summer sky. That's that's what I'm calling that one. Just to me, obviously. All right, so that's my socks. Um, they're probably going to be for me. My mother-in-law <clears throat> has requested a pair and her favorite color is blue. But I'm being rather selfish and I really want this. This I really want this yarn. So maybe I've got some left. I'll make her some with some different heels and toes or something to make it work. She tried on my Christmas socks and they fit her perfectly, apparently. So now I know what foot size she is and I don't have a reason to not make her socks. All right, so have a sip of my first coffee for the day. Woke up not wanting a coffee, I just wanted a tea. Then I had to go grab some groceries. And it's never a good idea to go grocery shopping when all you've had is a cup of tea. There were so many impulse purchases. I just, I mean, I'm not complaining. They were like chocolate scones and stuff, so. But technically didn't need them. I have to stop and grab coffee on the way out because honestly the idea of coming home and making myself one just seemed like too much effort at the time. Alright, next whip is, just see what I've got in my bag. Oh, okay. So my daughter is my eldest daughter, my bear. She is an Australia Day baby. So we haven't celebrated Australia Day since she was born, which I'm okay with because like... It's invasion day, really, it's not. I, I don't wanna get into this like it's not, this isn't a political podcast or anything like that, but we just, we celebrate it as my daughter's birthday instead of Australia Day because that's just what it is for our family now. And it's just, in this day and age, it doesn't seem correct to be celebrating Australia Day. I can celebrate that I love my country and I feel very lucky and privileged to live here, but doesn't feel like I should be celebrating Australia Day. All right, um, so it's her birthday coming up and we've put presents on lay-by and stuff for her because then I have to hide them in my house um, because that didn't work out so well for Christmas. She ended up hunting down a couple of her presents, which I like cried over. But then I decided I also wanted to knit her some things and I cast this on last on Halloween I cast this on I thought this would be a perfect thing to get finished and give it for her birthday so I am making her a top out of cotton um so soft I love knitting with cotton um I don't really have a pattern that's the only weird thing about this so what I'm doing is I had already made a cotton top for my youngest daughter and I kind of looked at what it, 
was like how many stitches it was on for hers um and it pretty much fits my eldest daughter i made it way too big so i thought i just need a few more stitches to make this one fit her but she's also growing so i'm a little bit concerned now that this won't be big enough it's really hard to tell when it's on the needles like i don't know Anyway, so what I've done is I'm doing the orange and now I'm up to this black and white portion, which is actually going to be a skull pattern. Um, and I can't show it to you because it's on my phone. I will put a picture in here. But the pattern that I'm using for the base, I've got it written here in my notes. It is called the skull top. And it, um, that's all it's called, skull top. It's on Ravelry. And it's by Marlia May. So I'm just using, she's got a chart with a skull on it. And I'm just using that as my base to do that. So basically I did the orange, I'll do the skulls and the black and white. And then I've got um, red, purple and then orange again. So this is Abbey Road Kung Fu Cotton from Spotlight. And then the others, that, the black, white, red and purple, which is the red and purple, um, is Flinders Cotton from Spotlight as well, if I remember correctly. Can't see it on there. I think it's Flinders. Yes, here we go. Yep, Flinders Cotton, 8-ply. Now, this one is 8-ply, but this one, the Abbey Road, I think is technically chunkier. Um, I think, yeah, it must be. It doesn't actually say what ply it is. But it says you're supposed to use a 55 millimeter needle, whereas these are only a 4. But I'm just using a 4 for it. And I figured the orange is going to be on the bottom, where it's not going to matter if it's slightly thicker. And it's going to be on the top, where I would prefer to have some more coverage anyway. Um... So I figured that kind of works perfectly. And feeling the difference between the two. Oh, you can see all my floats. It's the first time I've had to do something with floats. Um, there's like very little difference. This just feels a bit more, it just feels a tiny bit thicker than this does. So yeah, like it all knits up nicely together. So yep, I'm um, interested to see how these skulls work out. I, it kind of looked right a couple of rows ago and now I'm kind of going, oh, I don't know what I've done here. A little bit of an interruption there just to do some mum duties. Uh, not really. I just sat here while she got her water bottle. Um, so I've got the skull top and my blue socks in project bags, both by the Yarny Wombat or Winnie Wombat, depending on whether you're looking at Etsy or Instagram. So I love them, especially my sock one. I just a bit obsessed. So that's got plenty of room in there. Like I know it doesn't look like as much difference between the two. But that's basically, oh, honestly, I could still fit some more stuff in there. But this one, I've got my cotton. The two skeins that I'm using, I actually put them into those pockets. I don't know if that's what they're designed for. But when I went to pack it all up last night, I was like, oh, maybe I just pop the, oh my God, they fit in there really well. That's, that's a brilliant idea. So yeah, I've got my two skeins of cotton in there. And I've got the extra top of the middle section with like, that's, not, that's just my needle thing. And then I've got all my measuring tape and notions and stuff in there. So yeah, um, I am using stitch markers by, I'm inclined to say, oh, so that one, that's my mushroom. That's from Melbourne City Dye Works. Sorry, cover my face. Melbourne City Dye Works. Um, and I'm fairly certain the skull is from Bee Doodads. Because my daughter loves skulls. And I figure if I'm making her a skull top, I've got to make use a skull stitch marker. So, yes. Alright, I have one more whip. That is also for my daughter's birthday. Um, for most of her life, she's been dinosaur obsessed. She's not... She's not, she has a wide variety of interests. She loves all things Halloween, dinosaurs, space, uh, Barbies, uh, My Little Pony, 
anything to do with fairies or magic or anything like that it's right up her alley um she just loves everything she just if it's interesting she's there uh let's see i am making this for her a dino delight mind you she just informs me that she's not that interested in dinosaurs anymore and i'm like well too bad you're gonna dance happy birthday so that's what i am making the dino delight um i'm following the colors fairly closely let's see if i can find this is all i only just started this yesterday i thought i'll give this a go she was very distracted doing art stuff and whatnot yes i was like yep yeah, perfect time for me to and my youngest is napping so I was like, I'll just start this, see how much I can get done. So that's the tail, start at the tail. And it's knit in pieces and sewn up and that's fine. So yeah, I'm using, instead of this dark purple, I've got this coral color and then the blues are fairly similar. And then the plates, I guess, are going to be in this bright, bright yellow because yeah, I figure that'll just work beautifully. So I've got to get that and her top done by her birthday. Oh, and socks making her socks she loves her christmas socks but she has a very sensitive skin and it's just they're apparently itchy and i have told her the more i wash them the softer they get but she's just a bit funny so um from the bendigo woolen mills pre-dyed sock yarn the oriental flowers i'm making her some socks with that so these need 2.75s i think threw them in here and didn't even really check oh 3.25s that seems like big for a pair of socks might just I've made her socks on 2.75s before I might just try it out with that I'll do it I'm not gonna say I'll do a gauge because I don't do gauge swatches until I'm doing like jumpers or something but I'll do like the cuff and start some of the leg and see how it's going. This is just in a bag that I got from eBay. Nice and big because I'm not sure how many pieces there are and there's quite a few balls of cotton in there. I figure I could fit her socks in there as well. I think that could be it for my whips. Hmm. Um, obviously with Christmas just going by, I have a few pretty new things. Thank you to my husband. First and foremost, I have to confess that I am a bit silly and the Harry Potter knitting magic book that I got last episode, I bought that home, my husband got home and I'm like, look what I found today, it was only $22, I'm so proud of myself and he's just like, well, I went and pulled it out from under the Christmas tree for me. I felt so bad. But uh, we returned the one he got me and he said I could just spend the $40 it would normally cost at Spotlight on something else. And wouldn't you know it, as luck would have it, Stitchcraft and Wizardry decided to start stocking <laughs> sock blockers. I'm so happy. They weren't exactly $40. It was a much cheaper than that. Not much cheaper, but like, geez, they're dangerous. Uh, these are all large. I think I'm going to get the medium and the small as well. These fit my socks perfectly. I can't show you because I'm wearing mine, but I'll pop puppies on. Um, and ah, I'm stuck. I wanted to show you the Christmas socks when I was showing them to you before. I wanted to show them to you on the sock box. I was like, no, I can't because no one knows I've got them yet. So yeah, that's how these. So he's still got a bit of length in the toe there there's like a good inch so the ones that he's made me fit his socks perfectly but these fit my socks perfectly so yeah but they look pretty good his leg fits a lot better than mine mine's a bit baggier but that's because he's got beautiful trim angles and i like my socks looser so which is good yeah i love them i absolutely love them um I just love them so much. Thank you, Mike and Anna, for stocking these because they're divine. So they're at Stitchcraft, Stitchcraft and Wizardry, which funnily enough is also where my husband decided to get me some stocking stuffers. 
I couldn't believe he got this stuff for stocking stuffers. I would have gotten this stuff for like a legit present, not just, you know, something to put into the stocking. Um, he got me yarn, um, stitch craft and wizardry do a lot of like book and movie and, uh, I guess pop culture references. Um, this one, mm, it's just amazing. This is called Ink Spell on their gold finger base of 80% superwash extra fine merino, 15% nylon, and 5% gold stellina. I'm hoping when I hold this up to the camera, you will be able to see the sparkle. Okay. Oh, yes, you can. Look at that. This doesn't even do justice. Like, this is a fairly good photo. Yes, that does not do justice to how beautiful it is in real life. It's so pretty. I can't even make socks out of this. It's going to have to be a shawl or a cowl or something. Something that I can look down and see that sparkle because I couldn't bear to walk around on this. As soft as it is, I couldn't bear the idea of putting all those sparkles onto my floors. I just... An ink spell happens to be one of my all-time favourite books because it's the only book I've ever read that talks about how books make you feel and the importance of books and the power of books. And the power of words and it's just I don't know <sighs> that just that it's a trilogy and it just hits me every time I just oh I love it so much and there's yarn now that reminds me of it so I'll be able to make this into something and wear it and read ink spell and I'll just be in heaven and to go with that he also got me a stitch marker that says all I want for Christmas is you and then that's crossed out and says yarn I have no idea if that's like I don't think it is and edit that part out too um when I bought my sock blockers because they were only like $28 I think and I was like I've got 40 to spend here I decided to grab myself a little mini as well this is the Dumbledore's army mini and it's grey with red yellow I feel like that's a little bit of tinge of purple in there but it could also be a bit of the red running a little bit I guess I don't know very pretty not sure what I'm gonna use it for it could just be one of those minis that gets popped into a I have no idea I've got a few minis just sitting there that I don't know I guess if I did like a completely solid sock it would make a cute heel I don't know just it was dumb doors army I had to have it ah uh... Hubby did really well with the knitting stuff. I had requested a while ago a hand steamer. <laughs> when I made my daughter's little bolero thing, I was like, no, when I made my shawl, my shawl, um, the blue one, I didn't know how to block acrylic. So I asked and someone very lovely commented about steaming it with an iron or you could use a handheld steamer. So I offhand Liam mentioned to hubby, hey, I'd love a handheld steamer so I can steam acrylic garments or whatevs. And he delivered. And let me just say, he has benefited from this because now his uniform shirts get steamed. Like, I don't, he doesn't have to pull out the iron. I just stand there with my steamer and, and um, I did Nana Shaw with it the other day. I was a little bit nervous because it was 100% wool and I was like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work. But I tried it and it was beautiful and there was no issues. So yeah, that's just a Sunbeam one. He didn't buy me the cheapest model out there, but not, not the most expensive one either. So that was a relief because I'm a bit clumsy and I hate the idea of like dropping it and breaking it or something. If it was a really expensive one. So I know we're technically in pretty new things and we're not talking about books, but we've got a bit of an overlap today because I got books for Christmas so I wanted to talk about what I'm reading at the moment but they're also new to me so yeah my daughters went shopping for the first time ever with their dad to buy me a Christmas presents from them um and my youngest my bunny picked this <laughs> just because it's pink and has a bird on it I think so it's the Trent Dalton Boy Swallows Universe um so Apparently it's amazing. I'm guessing 
by all these prize things all over it. Um, it has been on my to read list for a little while, so I think that will be getting read in the next month or so. But at the moment, I am reading The Witcher. I love the Netflix series and I have been on the waiting list for the first book since March quite possibly. It was pretty early in the year when I went on there um, and thankfully hubby got it for me so I'm reading. So this is like short stories but it's basically the first season of The Witcher on Netflix. Um, you know how kind of, if you've seen it, you'll know, it jumps between storylines and timelines and it's a little bit confusing. Whereas in here, because there's chapter titles, it's a lot less confusing because you go, oh, okay, we're back in this part of their life with these people and this is happening because you can tell by the chapters. So like, for example, the first chapter is not that one, the voice of reason one. And then whenever we come back to this situation that is in, it's like the voice of reason two, the voice of reason three, the voice of reason four. And that makes it a lot easier to know what we're doing and where we're up to. So, yeah, I quite like that. Um, so once I get through this one, there's another one, I think, yep, of short stories that comes after this one. And then I have five of... I don't even know. Oh, okay. This is part of the first season two of The Witcher. So it's interesting. I can't wait to see how much, like, I'm reading this one and going, oh yeah, I've, I've watched that in the series. I've watched that in the series. I've watched that in the series. But then there are some things that are missing and I'm like, well, that hasn't happened yet. I don't have much of the book left to go. So I don't know what's going on here. Um, but obviously they're from the other books. I wonder how many of the books have kind of rolled into the first season. I'd be devastated if it's like there's only like one or two books left to cover. So yeah, that's what I've kind of covered two things there. That's what I'm reading at the moment, what I'm planning on reading and the pretty new books that I got for Christmas. So thank you, hubby and my bunny. I guess all that's left to do now is um coffee and a yarn. is going on at the moment so probably should have talked about my hair here because this is normally where I just talk about all the random things and life and whatnot um hmm. it's still school holidays I had all these grand plans to spend so much time with my eldest because my youngest is still at childcare one day a week which is normally today but given summer colds and how much coronavirus is going around at the moment we decided to just keep it home um and none of it's happening because the weather's awful uh my bunny's been home for the last two weeks um but i don't know like this these holidays are just going so fast i'm already starting to think about the fact that we have to pay school fees and get all the uniforms organized and everything because we've only got like four weeks and she goes back to school and it's just not enough time. I'm like, we're still getting over Christmas. We still haven't figured out where to put all their Christmas presents yet or all our Christmas presents yet. And we're already starting to have to think about going back to school. It's insane. Total jump here. Nitty Natty. I've started watching her podcast because I finished everybody else's that I've been watching. Like it's pretty easy to catch up on an episode when it crops up. Um, and so I started watching Nitty Natty because I have been trying to watch Australian podcasts. And I love them. I found quite a few and I love watching them all. Um, but I don't know. She's a, she's a teacher in America and I just wanted to, I don't know. She kept cropping up in my, you might enjoy watching this list. I'm like, fine, I'll give her a go. Watched one episode and I was hooked. She's amazing. I love it. I love her dog toaster. I <laughs> don't know what it is. I just love watching her. Um, and also the other thing I was going to mention was Mad About You. Um, she did Vlogmas this year and a couple of times she kept apologising for being boring but I just found it so fascinating. I don't know why. <laughs> um, like I love her podcast to begin with because I learned something new from each podcast that I watch like um, Mad About You. Uh, Madeline has 
encouraged me to try really brightly colored things because she makes them and they look amazing and patterned things like everything seems to be patterned and it looks beautiful and to also be I know this probably doesn't sound great but I don't mean this in a bad way at all but to be a bit more selfish with my knitting like there is nothing wrong with knitting things for myself and considering how much work and effort gets put into them who's going to appreciate it more than me so yeah I'm trying to probably in the garbage truck right now I'm sorry like our house is at the end of the court and they're just so loud though I don't know um yeah so that's what I've learned from Madeline um and watching her vlogmas it just gives you a little um window into what they're like outside of knitting like knitting is still part of it but it was still nice to see like everyday stuff instead of just knitting it was really lovely I really enjoyed it so well done thank you Madeline what else have I learnt from watching podcasts? Yarn Hoarder uh, taught me that it is okay to have tons of projects on the needles. There is nothing wrong with that. If you want to flip from one thing to another and that's what keeps you busy with your knitting, go for it. She also encouraged me to start knitting socks. That's what actually got me started on knitting socks was the Yarn Hoarder. Thank you very much for that, Amber, because now I'm obsessed and my family will reap all the benefits. Um, Hannah from Rose Hip chick podcast oh, what haven't I learnt from Hannah Hannah's podcast is very relaxing and I feel relaxed when I watch it and she's actually a podcast that I have going on in the background no matter what like if I'm cooking if I'm knitting if I'm folding washing Hannah's on in the background because I really enjoy listening to her um I learned how to dye with food dye from Hannah because she talked about doing it with her daughters and I thought I'll give that a go did that with my daughters and I became obsessed so now that's what I do with my yarn that's how I knit my blue one with food dye um she also jumpers and sweaters or cardigans whatever you want to call them Hannah likes to knit them and shawls as well and that's kind of encouraged me to give those a go so Nana's shawl that I just made her that was inspired by Hannah I also bought some colours I talked about last podcast the colors i bought to knit my neck shawl um were because hannah has a very simple shawl that she made and now i want to make one very similar um i don't and to be a bit more environmentally friendly and aware of what i'm knitting with that's a massive thing i've learned from hannah so she's encouraged me to go off and do my own research and figure out what kind of um footprint i want to leave as a knitter i guess Speaking of, so I know last episode I was talking about acrylic and how I wasn't sure what I was going to do with all the acrylic I have in my stash. I'm going to keep it and I'm going to knit it up. Mostly throw rugs and stuff like that. I do have three jumpers worth of acrylic that I'm probably going to make into jumpers because they are like a premium acrylic and they're very, very soft. And I think they would be the perfect thing for me to knit practice jumpers with. I'm not going to use my absolutely stunning hand dyed yarn um, well, because I don't have a jumper's worth of hand dyed yarn in like the same ply and colorways and stuff that I can make just yet. But um, I don't want to use that my first time around knitting a jumper for myself because um, I'm terrified I would ruin it. So I figured I can do a couple of practice jumpers first and I can wear them and wear them and wear them until they're completely destroyed and then I can unwind them. And remake them into something else because that way it will just keep getting used and I'm not just going to throw it out and have it sit in landfill but I'm also not going to donate it to other people that I don't know what they're going to do with it. I don't know if they're going to make it into something that's just going to get thrown out and put into landfill or if they're not going to want it themselves and throw it out and put it into landfill. I would rather just keep it here, use it myself and then I know how it's being used and whatnot and with small children sometimes acrylic is just the best thing to be using um, for now. I'll use up everything I've got. I probably, I don't think I will ever be buying acrylic again. Obviously circumstances may change and I, but I can't see a reason why I would need to buy any more acrylic. Yeah. And it's not that I don't enjoy working with it. It doesn't bother me. I like working with all types of yarn, cotton, acrylic, wool, reno. I just, I'll super wash whatever but um, I am becoming more aware of 
my footprint. I just like we already I'm already very aware of that kind of stuff when I do my grocery shopping and in our kitchen and I just figure I should extend that to my knitting. So yeah. I think that could be it guys. I probably went off on a few tangents this time around. I didn't really plan out what my yarn was going to be about today. And I think I might like it that way. There wasn't anything specific I wanted to yarn on about. And um, unfortunately, that means you kind of get to see inside the warped paths my mind takes. I do flip from one thing to another very quickly. But that's just that's just my brain. <laughs> this is how I roll. Um, so, yeah. I hope you are all enjoying yourselves and you get everything you need from your crafting at the moment. Um, hopefully it's relaxing for you or maybe it's just uh, a stress relief or whatever it is for you. I hope that's what you find. Um, until I talk to you again, please look after your mental, physical, emotional, social strength, because uh, strength, health even, because all of that is important. And so are you. Bye.